hair is really it turned out to be a pop top. <laughs> um, I think it's time for a haircut. Yeah, much better. Thank you. I never had a chance to tell you guys what my experiences with the ADA committee uh, meeting were like at Hartsfield Jackson International Airport in the Hapeville, Georgia area. So I wanted to fire away at that. Uh, number one, I learned that they are very, very interested in not just civil rights and disability rights, but they're also very interested in uh, designing better ways to uh, accessibility for all people with difference, differences or all people with human detour systems. Well, I like to say that because I don't like the word disability and I've heard it used so many times so that people can manipulate others into getting what they want. But it went like this. Number one, I got this uh, gift bag which I did not expect from Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. And I don't can't find the gift bag. Let me see if I can find the pin. Oh, here's the here's the pin. And here's the other gift. So the gift bag is right over here. I got this gift bag, which was on all of the tables for all of the members. And I got this pin that says um, ATL1. One ATL. And then I got this uh, flameless LED candle that has the uh, Hartsfield Jackson International Airport logo and it's not as uh, state-of-the-art as the uh, Philips uh, flameless candles at Target that are really expensive but it has the, uh, has the plastic flickering flame and it has the orange glow so I thought that those were interesting gifts I'm more interested in the pin than I am in the candle because I don't really like the design of the candle, even though I do intend on keeping it. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. Uh, perhaps I'll use that candle as a way to shine light on the Autism Airport rehearsal tours. I don't know. But as for the meeting itself, uh, I quickly learned again that they're all about accessibility and they talked about some really interesting things that I think I could use at the Center for Leadership and Disability where I work and I could bring this up in our next staff meeting but basically uh, if you have a event where you have uh, people with vision impairments their accommodations should include uh, having somebody uh, put their meat on, and their food on their plate like it's a clock and the meat should always be facing six o'clock so that they can gain access and if there's buffet buffet style food, uh, the person with who is blind should get their food first, which I thought was really interesting. Other things I learned is that um, there are people at the airport that are talking about wanting to push for using the right terms for people with disabilities and wanting to stamp out the R word and want to stop using derogatory terms like paraplegic or wheelchair bound or even using autistic is um, is politically incorrect to some people, even though ASON would highly uh, frown on that. So, and before I uh, get going here, I'm headed off to go study and put my vlogs up on YouTube for this week. And I wanted to uh, put it out there that my vlogs were I meant my vlogs, but my presentation was, it went well despite the fact that I forgot my uh, PowerPoint presentation. And I also uh, had people that were more interested in what accommodations we can provide for um, uh, travelers who are on the spectrum. And one of the things that I suggested is, uh, when we have flight delays, uh, these airlines need to have pagers and buzzers. And they need to know that if they're 
their passengers are going to go somewhere else, like the sensory friendly suites, or if they're going to go to the uh, transportation mall uh, instead of the plane train or the electric train, what they're going to do is they're going to need a place to sit quietly for a while and calm down, and then uh, the airline can uh, buzz them or page them. So. Those are some of the things that they're interested in. And of course, I'm getting ready to meet with them. And I just sent off my PowerPoint slides and I'm, I just, I'm really excited and I'm looking forward to these meetings. So first and foremost, I wanted to let everyone know that I just missed my bus trying to get over here. And it takes 40 minutes on the weekends for me to get from point A to point B. Like in this case, um, go westbound to uh, the Dorval Marta station. So I ended up crossing the street and I'm waiting for the eastbound bus and that means I have to transfer to uh, another bus that's going to take me another additional 30 minutes uh, to a different uh, train station that will put me right in front of Georgia State University and I'm not happy about that. But hey, at least I've got a way to get around. Anyway, I wanted to let you know that I cannot tell you how happy I am to have a um, nice so video editing software that I can put um, beautiful logos on and I can have music on that's um, non-copy non written music. And I'm also happy that I don't have to um, edit more any more videos on my phone because of the following reasons. Number one, um, it was hard on the phone because you had to uh, make sure that all your videos were uh, saved into the, uh, the photo and video archives before you could even import your video. Your video, your your, uh, your edited masterpiece back into your uh, phone and then if my phone was too full I couldn't save it so sometimes I would have to do uh, a video in like five minutes of shooting and that got to be a pain after a while but it gave me the experience um, another reason why I'm super happy about having this uh, updated video software is because I don't have to spend lots of hours uh, editing things when I get to the library at Georgia State University. I can just edit things throughout the week uh, when I'm not studying, when I'm not working, and then I can just have those ready and I can put those onto a uh, USB port, upload them, and then just be done. So I'm really happy with that. And then the other reason why I'm really excited, here's a big one, is because uh, filming and video, I've discovered since I, I've always loved movies all of my life, and I liked watching talk shows, I liked watching Good Morning America and the Today Show, even though I like animation and things like that. Um, I've discovered that I have a hobby for film, and filming is something that I want to be really, really good at, and if I'm doing vlogs, I would like to do the very best that I can to make my vlogs as professional looking as possible. So that's step one to making my videos great. Now, I'm currently using my Samsung Galaxy J1, which I got because I, again, I mentioned I hated my Windows phone, and sure, I could uh, videotape things or I could record things on it, but I just didn't have uh, the, a proper cord with the USB port where I could get things back onto the computer, which, again, was uh, absolutely annoying, and the picture quality was very low. So, uh, I'm using this phone right now, but my objective is to eventually uh, go and find myself a state-of-the-art vlogging camera quality pictures, really, really qu good quality video, and something
thing where I don't have like the uh, up and down portrait where I can have a whole uh, video. I can have the whole screen of everything around me. Um, so I've been looking on Amazon.com at different vlogging cameras and I've been looking for a really nice uh, yeah, uh, selfie stick that I can use that also has a tripod on it so I can have more videos where I'm sitting at my desk at work or sitting at my desk at home or sitting at my desk uh, or sitting at my table so that you guys can see what I'm up to and I'd like to take this thing more places. Another thing that I'm really inspired to do is uh, give myself a video drone because I've seen some of the work of Casey Neistat and when he travels around he uses his drones to take shots of uh, or aerial shots of New York City or aerial shots of uh, let's say Monaco which is in South France and he uses those um, everywhere and he's, he's just done some really really cool things with them so I'd like to show you guys some really cool aerial images of what Atlanta looks like and possibly uh, use those aerial images with uh, with the new Hello World Maya logo with a new globe on it just to uh, make uh, people aware of where I live and how pretty the city of Atlanta is I'm at the bus stop waiting. I don't want to keep recording. I want to save some room for some other videos in here. Tonight is Super Bowl Sunday, and yes, I will be watching and rooting for the uh, Philadelphia Eagles since they lost to Minnesota, which is my home team. And I always root for the uh, team that beats the yeah, teams that I want to go to the Super Bowl. But, and yes, I'm going to a party. But there's a big debate going on. I don't really want to go too into the political side. Lately, there's been a lot of debate as to whether or not football players uh, should be nailing or standing for the national anthem. And here's what I have to say about that. As long as you are doing whatever you feel is comfortable to respect your country, I think kneeling is a good idea as long as you're quiet and you let the singer do the national anthem. You put your hand on your heart and you look at that flag. There isn't a problem with uh, kneeling. I think kneeling is a sign of humility. Standing is a sign of respect too. As long as you're not looking at your cell phone or you're not looking at a football, you're looking at the flag. You're remembering in your heart all the people that died for this country. I don't think that's the problem. I mean, what is the big deal? campus right now and then I am headed to Trader Joe's to pick up some food because I am headed over to my boss's uh, Super Bowl party tonight and believe me he knows how to throw it down his parties are not like your traditional Super Bowl parties with beer wings uh, fried chicken or pizza his Super Bowl parties are classy there's wine uh, local crafted beer like the growl which is a, a growler beer right here in the Atlanta area which is uh, next door to Java Cats Cat Cafe in Grant Park area and people there know how to cook so that's one of the reasons why I go to his party and the other thing too is these aren't serious uh, football players most of the people there are very outgoing and they're extroverted like myself and they like to watch the commercials. 
I like to watch the commercials because it's fun to see the art at place. All right, art at play. But what commercial I'm waiting to see? Um, answer to that question is um, The Incredibles 2. I mean, so far you just have um, a few with um, Jack Jack and his laser eyes. I want to see what this movie is going to look like. Not just a baby with lasers coming out of his eyes and daddy picking him up and shouting, You have powers! You have powers! And then having a portion of his hair melt burned off. Enough is enough. Let's get this Super Bowl party started right now! We are going to have to um, go visit that new coffee bar called Dancing Goats. I believe they're a chain right here in Atlanta. We go and have a coffee, and a croissant, maybe a coffee and a fruit, maybe a tea and a fruit. You get the idea. signing off now but I'm basically here at Trader Joe's picking up some food and getting ready to head over to the Super Bowl party um, one I'm out of um, media room on my phone too I don't think any of my colleagues want to be filmed so um, may the best team win tonight even though I'm disappointed that the Vikings aren't in the game playing the Jaguars and I am tired of New England getting everything, uh, but uh, if you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Until next time, I'm Maya Sundermeyer and I'm signing off now. Bye. Kombucha is really taking a storm. When I first saw it uh, yesterday, I thought it was um, the name of the brand, not the drink. Anyway, Trader Joe's always has these great uh, samples that I can try. So this is a cracker. Chipotle cheese and what they call a water cracker. And this is a pizza bite. Mm -mm -mm.